It's a pleasure again to talk to you about some of the operations we do on the aortic root and particularly the reimplantation operation. So as of two years ago, we had done 1,113 root reimplantation operations. And uh, we do uh, obviously a lot of these type of operations more than anybody else. And uh, most of the time there, there are two of us who do them and there are really only three people in the country who do them on a regular basis. Uh, in our own hands, the risk of death on elective operations has been 0.16%. And um, fortunately, they uh, are operations we do with a high level of reliability, although they are quite complicated operations. And it certainly takes some time to learn the nuances of the operation. Now, we modified the original uh, Tyra and David operation, and uh, we started using pledgets and Hagar's dilators and doing it a different way. We don't measure the leaflets. And so I'm going to show you a video on how we do it. Uh, let me make a couple of other comments, and you can look up our publications. We've shown that there's no statistical significant difference with reimplantation currently for a three leaflet valve with, versus a bicuspid valve. However, the curves are diverging and it's looking like the risk of reoperation is higher over time with the patients who had bicuspid valve reimplantations. And generally, we prefer to do a remodeling operation for that patient population, as I showed you earlier. Let me add another uh, point. Uh, we uh, did a study many years ago of 178 patients with connective tissue disorders, mainly Marfans, but some low Dietz, low Danlos patients. And in that series, we had no deaths. And the long-term durability was pretty good. As of two years ago, we now uh, re analyzing that patient population. Uh, so two years ago, we had 214 reimplantation operations for connective tissue disorder patients with no deaths. And it's looking like our preliminary data showing better than a 95% freedom from reoperation, even in these patients at 10 years after surgery. And we'll uh, report that once we have all the data analyzed and ready to present it. So that group of patients is also looking good. We've also shown that if you compare patients with, uh, who have a Bentol procedure with a biological valve, the results are very similar in the sense of uh, mortality risk over time, out to 10 years, and also reoperation, which is obviously a concern if you're having your valve preserved. And a separate study we did showed that in the patients who have a repaired valve, if they get through those first 10 years, they are much better off than a patient who has a biological valve, because from about eight, nine years, the durability of the bicuspid, sorry, the, the bioprosthetic valve starts really dropping off. So I hope you find this video interesting, uh, just to show you some of the technical aspects of what we do. It's really fun operations for you who are surgeons. Uh, there's a longer version of both the remodeling operation and the reimplantation operation that you can look up on our website or it's posted on YouTube and just look it up under my name and you'll find them there too. So please enjoy it. Thank you again for attending our conference and I hope you find it uh, useful. Thank you. So I thought it was important just to show you a brief uh, way we do the reimplantation operation. So here we are putting the plagiated sutures for the commissures into place and that's going to be anchored in the tube graft. And here we're just freeing up the valve. And it's very important that the entire valve is uh, freed up. And then once that is done, we then put sutures underneath the annulus through the left ventricular outflow tract. And these are going to be passed to, through the new tube graft to anchor the valve inside the tube graft. It's critical that the entire valve is within the tube graft. In the right ventricular outflow tract area, this can be a bit more tricky because the annulus typically is lower than the, the right ventricular outflow tract. And so it takes time to make sure that this is very carefully done 
and the sutures, in a sense, threaded in the aortic wall um, so that one doesn't tear the right ventricular outflow tract. So once those sutures are in place, then the tube graft is taken and um, put down to surround the valve. And then I use a hay gauze dependent on the body surface area of the patient to make sure that one doesn't make it too tight and to uh, not cause stenosis of the valve. Then once those sutures are tied down, then those original anchoring commissure sutures are then marked in position to make the valve competent and then the valve is sewn into position into the tube graft. And I try and make a bit of a new sinotubular ridge for the new valve. I think that probably is important from a hemodynamic point of view. So this is then just sewn into position and the valve is anchored in position. So one ends up with two suture lines here, the one at the edge of the valve um, and at basically right next to the annulus. And then there's the suture line in the left ventricular outflow tract below the aortic valve annulus. And there's the non-coronary sinus being sewn into position and um, it's important that one doesn't tear the leaflet and one doesn't capture the actual in annulus when one's doing because then that can tether the valve such that it um, doesn't function freely. Then the buttons are made for the coronary artery. So first the openings are made in the Dacron tube graft um, and then those buttons are sewn to the tube graft with a Teflon donut around the buttons and obviously in this patient with low steeds, but I use this routinely for all patients, it's important that that is done so that you don't get an aneurysm later on down the road at the coronary buttons and uh, having done many hundreds of these uh, I've been fortunate so far not having to reoperate on it, anybody because they've developed an aneurysm at the buttons although we certainly see that and here's the right coronary artery about to be reimplanted it's absolutely critical that the coronary sinus um, artery that comes off either from the right coronary artery itself proximally or from a separate ostium is reimplanted otherwise aneurys uh, arrhythmias can result and there's just testing the, the aortic root making sure there's good hemostasis and then the distal anastomosis is done to the distal aorta in this case the aorta is pretty normal and so this anastomosis is just done just proximal to the uh, innominate artery. Then we check for hemostasis and usually there's not a problem with hemostasis. The patient is defibrillated and then weaned from cardiopulmonary bypass. So there's just a brief uh, video of how the reimplantation operation is done. Thank you for your